happens when the stones get thrown into the water? Even if you look at your face, it's going to be rippled and distorted, right? So we're living in times where there's much distortion, trying to skew and distort the image of who you are and that image of your Father, the who is Christ, the living water, okay? James 1, 22 um, through 25 says, Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror or the mirror reflected through the water and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom continues in it, not forgetting what, what he has heard, but doing it, and they will be blessed as they do. And so this isn't, I mean, a lot of people think this is about that doing theology, but it's not. He's saying when you look into who you are in Christ, you're going to do who Christ is in you through you. And, and that is that is who you're meant to be. But if you stop looking at the image of who you are and you forget who you are, you're not going to be able to carry through with God's plan for you because you're going to have been, the image of who you are is distorted by all the rocks and stones being thrown mm -hmm. into your image. You're letting the image of who you are in Christ be distorted by the world and even by rocks that people are slinging. Mm -hmm. And it's messing up our distortion of who we are. And, and the, the truth is, who you are is his. And so when, you know, what does that do to the his name? When you're saying, I am I'm in Christ. I'm a Christian. I'm a little Christ. But yet you're letting the world distort who you, your image of him and you. And then you're not, you're not able to live out that image of you correctly. And that is the biggest problem right now. With the, so many... Stay true to the image of who you are. You can look in the living water and see his, that, think about that water still, and you see your face in that. What a gift. What a gift. So our doing comes from remembering who we are in his sight. Otherwise, we miss our opportunity to live out his identity, which is his kingdom here in this world. Sometimes when the water, you know, when a wellspring starts moving, I used to live right by this man-made lake, and it had a fountain. That was, when it was turned on, the water would get all muddy and hazy. But you know what else would happen? If there was any debris in the water, it would get moved to the side so that the people could come by and pick it up. So, but you know, if you looked at the water, you couldn't see a reflection because first of all, it was moving, and second of all, it was kicking up all the mud and the trash that was on the bottom. And that can make us excited um, because even when the water gets muddy, um, it's actually becoming more clean. And we can look and see with our eyes and be like, that looks awful. But God's actually like, well, and sometimes it gets messy before it gets clean. <laughs> you know, think about your house. I mean, my closet, when I'm going to clean it, it gets really messy but it's actually getting clean. And so we can look at when things get muddy, like for think about the mud on that guy's eyes, yet he was getting healed. And so sometimes we are um, getting, we're getting most clean when things get most muddy. And so that can give us such hope in this world. Um, it's okay, don't worry. Sorry. Hey, when the enemy tries to distract, I know God's speaking. Okay. So. <laughs> That's a good thing. Um, so sometimes the best cleaning that God does is when we all have the most mud on our eyes. And the best healing he does is when he's when the mud is most on our eyes. And he's saying, go, scent, go, scent. And so um, the waters are only moving when the springs are turned on. And, and believe it or not, it may not look like it, but the living, the springs of living water are turned on full blast right now. And there, he is moving and he is here. And he is doing something beyond what we can ever ask or imagine. He is doing something amazing that we haven't even begun to see, see yet. So hold on to that. Dirt settles where there is no movement. So when you start seeing dirt kick up, like, woo, get excited. It's not a time to despair. It's a time to get excited. 
because Jesus, you know, he think about him walking and through and dirty, dirt, dusty roads. What's left behind him? A trail of dust. We're seeing it. We're seeing the dirt moving because his feet are moving. And he is letting his light shine. He's breaking forth. And so, so many of his miracles involved water um, and liquid. And uh, think about even the Israelites when they were crossing over um, on dry ground, the waters parted. Think about uh, Noah, Noah's Ark. That was uh, the flood. And yet he sustained his, his promise through those who were held in that ark. And think about when Jesus himself walked on water and even Peter walked on water. So um, it's a, so many of the things involve water um, where Christ is our only place, solid place to stand. He, the living water, is our only place to stand. So he's he's going to show up. He may cause a, He may send a boat for us to to um, in the midst of the rocking waves and, and tell it and, and calm the waters and tell them to be still. Or he may he may climb in the boat with us, walk at some walk on the water and just climb in with us. Or he may part the waters and we're going to walk step across on dry land. In Christ, we can have every reason to hope that because he is our solid place to stand, even when the whole world is shaking. And the shaking, he already said, was going to come. And here it is. But you can know you can be unshaken, even when the whole world is shaking. Or if you do get shaken, be praising him because he's shaking something out that, that needs to go. So... Um, Sometimes I've been wondering lately, or sometimes I've been sad because it doesn't feel like I can always feel him. Like, I'm like, God, you used to, I used to feel you all the time, but lately it's been harder. I think I said a few weeks ago, it feels like I'm having to box through the cloud to get to the peace. That, and he, he's, he's saying that the feeling doesn't come until the faith comes. And it's harder. Mm -hmm. Right now it's harder to have faith because we're having to deal with some stuff some unbelief in some places in us that we didn't even know were there because they're getting kicked up. The things are getting kicked up. And that's not the world's fault. That's good that God's revealing that to us because he's preparing us for him. He's saying, that needs to go. You're getting ready to be with me forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And you want to be as clean as you can get when you arrive. You want to be as free from the flesh and from the world. You want to be a radiant bride when you get here. Mm -hmm. um, faith says move. Before you, um, before you feel, just keep swimming, trusting that I am the one keeping you afloat. And if you just step out in faith in Him, the feeling, His presence is going to come. You're going to know it. His peace is going to come, and you're going to know it. Um, I'm going to read uh, John uh, 21 uh, verses 4 through 12, real quick. Just as the day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And this is when, you know, think about this, the disciples. They just saw the one they put all their hope in crucified. They, they thought, man, this, this thing is over. It's done. We just made fools of ourselves putting our faith in this one, and we don't even know what to do. So what do we do? We just go back to fishing, go back to our lives before. And so this is what happened. Jesus, um, just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. I wonder what they were thinking. I wonder if they just decided, we're going to try not to think about him anymore. So therefore, they're not even looking for him. But what happens? Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish? They answered, no. He said to them, cast, you, cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of that disciple whom Jesus loved, therefore, said to Peter, It is the Lord. So when did they know it was him? After, yeah, when they, they cast on the right side of the boat, whenever they obeyed him. Even mm -hmm. though they didn't know it was him. They just, they listened and they obeyed. They, they, when they saw the evidence of him, all of a sudden they knew it was him. And Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord. He put on his outer garment, for he was stripped, of, stripped for work and threw himself in the sea. And the other disciple 
came into the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, about a hundred yards off. Then they got out on land, and they saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it and bread. So Jesus really didn't need the fish they were catching anyway. But <laughs> he was just, he wanted them to participate in what he was doing. He said to them, bring the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went abroad and hauled the net ashore. Um, 153 of them and although there were so many the net was not torn and you know that the first time that this happened the net got torn and that some of the fish were lost but when Jesus does it not one is missing not one is missing and so um, Jesus is an expert at showing up when we have caught nothing He's an expert at showing up when we've caught nothing. When we've tried with to haul in our net and the net's ripped and things have gotten lost. And I know the church has tried to make a haul with leading people to Christ and many have slipped through the broken net. But when Christ shows up, that net will hold and not one will be lost. And that gives me such hope because he does what we can never do. He does it. And when he shows up, we recognize him and we all of a sudden see the evidence of him. He is always fishing up more than we can ask or imagine in our lives. If we could understand it, it wouldn't be him. If we could understand what he's doing, if we could like pinpoint and diagram it, that would not be God. And we've done that for far too long. So I'm gonna just close. Um, with the poem I wrote about fishing with him because I do believe we're getting ready to have the biggest haul of catch that we've ever seen in the history of ever. Because not because we're not because we're trying to fish, but because he is fishing and he's gonna use us to get to bring in his catch. Come cast into the deep, <clears throat> dear one. Set your fear aside. Come sit beside me here, sweet child. And me, you've nothing to hide. I know the water is deep, dear child, and you can't see what lurks below. Your pleading eyes say it all. Please don't make me go. Take my hand, my beloved bride. Let me calm your restless heart. Come stand inside this boat with me. Together, we'll make a brand new start. You see, my precious little one, when you are casting in the sea, what your priceless heart is doing is casting into me. In my heart, there waits for you a treasure I long to give. So come, my sweet, priceless bride, come that you may live and breathe a brand new breath of life like you have never known. I'll give you my breath, dear one, for you to call your own. Come climb on unknown mountains and tame a restless sea. I'll watch you grow into everything I created you to be. So take my hand and come with me as we cast into the deep. In exchange for your faith in me, I'll give you my net to keep. You'll climb unknown mountains, you'll tame a restless sea, you'll lose yourself in this adventure and be fully found in me. So Lord, we're here to just turn in our nets and say we don't know how to fish, we don't know how to do this thing without and we're, we're tired of doing it, Lord, not seeing you properly, leaning on our own understanding and letting things slip through the cracks, Lord. But Lord, will you just pick us up, take us with you, let us be in the adventure of who you are, even this day, Lord. Let us lose ourselves in who you are and be fully found in you, knowing that we will stand because you were victorious. Give us the faith to see you as we've never seen you before. Give us the eyes to see as we've never seen before. And if it, if it means that you have to put mud on our eyes, Lord, then do it. But don't let us look, miss you for the world. Don't let us miss you because we're looking at other things instead of looking straight into your face. We love you. We trust you. We thank you for being our king, our victorious Jesus, the lover of our souls. And we just entrust our lives into your hands, Jesus. Amen. Um, I'm
I'm going to just stay down here because I'm going to